junior finals, you can you know, kind of double up screens, watch both of them at the same time, but that also produces just a really good uh, fan product. We have the fans really close to the match this year. A little bit different environment. It should be a lot of fun in-house as well as being at home. And tonight's a great opportunity to utilize the split screen function if you're watching on a computer. Uh, if you are watching on the Roku or iOS app or any other device, you will have to use the devices if you want to watch both of these finals simultaneously. And we've got our spotlight, so our athletes are going to be coming to the mat here very soon. We've got a loaded slate here of 17 finals in the 16U because we start at 88 pounds, finish up at heavyweight. Going to be a lot of good matches. A couple I've really got circled. 106. Gray Burnett is on an absolute tear. He's taking on Bruno Cassiope. Burnett defeated his yeah. brother in the semifinals. And Bruno, uh, a, probably the craziest semi of the day, junior or uh, 16 yeah. year. Latch off at the last second, pick up the fall while he was down by six points to make it here to the finals. Yeah, could, literally could not have come any any later right. that fall. What, what other finals you got at your circle in there? Another one on circle, 160, Maximus Norman of Tennessee versus Aaron yeah. Stewart of Illinois. Like I said, Illinois in the team race. Tennessee had been a great tournament um, historically for Tennessee. That's partially because of Maximus Norman in the finals. Yeah, Norman's really high put, uh, or offensively, just, you know, really offensive from start to finish. Uh, these powerful athletes that I've got to watch. Those quarterfinals and semifinals will be a good one. But here we see, we got our 88 pound First finalist taking the mat from Ohio in the red singlet, Brandon Bickerton. He will be facing off against New Jersey's own Edward George. Referees out on the mat. We are shaking hands here. We are underway, 88 pound finals. George coming off of a huge win in the semifinals over Ace Chittum, who was my pick to win this bracket. He beat him 4-2, really controlled um, the entire match, but a, a really tough opponent in Bickerton. Yeah, Bickerton's done a good job of winning consecutive close matches pretty much from the round of 16 on, round of quarterfinals on, and so you know, he'll be used to being in a, in a tight, highly contested match like we expect this final to be. Here's a single leg from George, and we're going to get a quick, potentially dangerous, watching that knee and ankle of Bickerton. Now it's Bickerton to the leg, darting in to the angle, close shin wizard defense from George. Bickerton trying to come behind. But George keeping him at bay with that wizard. And now Bickerton gonna elevate and take George out to pick up the step out. Our first points of the match go to Bickerton. Yeah, Bickerton's really good with that. It's almost like a little misdirect from space. Goes left, then the right side. He hit that a few times in the semifinal match. And that's what we saw there in that first leg attack. George controlling the ties here with the underhook inside control, uses it to get to the leg. We're grounded here, so if we do go out of bounds and nothing changes, there will be no point. It looks like we're going to get a stalemate. There it is. The official stains the two back up with 36 seconds to go in the opening period. Nice slide by by Bickerton. Drops down to the leg. Again, he's gonna have a tough time finishing with the close shin wizard defense from George. Keep your head up, keep your head up. Looking cradle, he's gonna get two points on the exposure. And they go out of bounds. Strong finish there from Brandon Bickerton. And he did a really good job. You know, you mentioned he hit the slide by. Didn't get fully behind, dropped down to the single leg, and then finished with that blowing right through. So good job there from Bickerton, kind of stringing one thing together to another thing. That's going to do it for the first period. The step out and the exposure for Brandon Bickerton give him a 3-0 lead. Yeah, Bickerton 
good job striking first. And as we mentioned, you know, these periods, they, they fly by. So George going to need to get on his offense, not let Pickerton get back to those singles. George had success going to the underhook and collar tie in the first period. We'll see if he tries to go back to that. There's that slide by again from Bickerton. This time George did a good job squaring up, not letting him get that angle. Yeah, felt it in the first period. Able to, to defend here in period number two. Yeah. Get the There's the underhook from George, taking Bickerton to the zone. Now you snap. George wants that step out. Yeah, Bickerton, got it, yeah. yeah, good job circling in by Bickerton. These two guys, you know, get both both younger, yet to hit high school. Bickerton just going to be a freshman at Medina High School and. George still just going to be an eighth grader, and he's currently homeschooled. And pressure in from George allows Bickerton to drop down to the double. Not going to get the takedown, but will get one point on the step out. Yeah, just 55 seconds to go here now. The urgency is really on for George. Yep, two two-pointers will put him on the, in the lead on criteria, however. He's already looking headlock. I don't know if he needs that yet. Not yet. No, if he can go takedown and turn. George forcing this position with the double overhooks, but Bickerton gonna ground himself and pull Wizard. They go out of bounds, grounded. Yeah, and that's the second or third time where Bickerton's shown some savviness on the edge there. Looks like maybe he's gonna give up a step out, able to turn in and force the stalemate. George underhook to the edge, trying to jack Bickerton up. This time he gets it. Yep, he's going to get one step out. He, he needs more than once now with 20 seconds to go. He needs two twos or a four. Unless he can get a real quick step out. Front headlock position. He's got to try something. Looking for a go behind Bickerton. Gets to the leg. Brandon Bickerton gonna hold on for the victory. And he's fired up. Our first champion of the night gives the shout, flexes. Brandon Bickerton. It's the offense in the first period that really, really paid off for Bickerton there. Yeah, he used that single, that slide by. And a really, in his defense, very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, really savvy match there from Brandon Bickerton. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit better from the start. And, you know, George looked like he was starting to put things together there in the second, but didn't have enough time to hunt down Bickerton. And Bickerton comes away with goal. But good match here as we'll see our match replay. And we see that first two-pointer as Bickerton just blows through. George, and then at the end, hold on and celebrate. And that's our first match tonight. We're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be back with you for our 94-pound finals.
94 pound finalists are on the map. You see Jarrett Smith in the blue out of Michigan and Turner Ross in the red out of Minnesota. Ross in the red, Smith in the blue. We'll shake hands and we are underway at 94 pounds. Smith comes out looking for a two on one, using it to snap, trying to get to an angle. Ross grabbing far tricep to square up though. Ross will be a, a freshman this year at Simley High School. Smith going to be a sophomore at Lowell High School, Michigan. Lowell, same high school as the Deans, Gabe Dean, Max Dean. Oh, okay. I know Simley has produced uh, yeah. a, a lot of stud wrestlers as well. So Both these wrestlers coming from good programs. And Ross going to go on the clock first because Smith will control the first 45 seconds with that two-on-one. And he's right back to it. Smith, excuse me, Ross needs to grab that top hand. Get rid of this. Smith is doing a good job of using it. He hasn't been able to get to a takedown yet, but he's not hanging out. He keeps going to that snap and just keeping the ref off of him. Not, or, so they're not calling stalemate. They're right. on him to work from, from there. Yeah, and sometimes you'll see, you know, refs, they, they don't, they don't really allow you to sit in one position for too long, but then other times they let you work a little bit. Looks like this, this ref's you know, just letting them work. Mm -hmm. And Ross unable to score in that 30 seconds, so the first points of the match go to Jarrett Smith at one point on the shot clock. Ross spending a lot of time on the knees here. Mm -hmm. Now he comes up with the underhook. Yeah, I called Ross's semifinal, did a lot of the same thing, really felt, it seems like he feels comfortable underneath there, underneath in that front head, maybe shallow underhook position. So we'll see if they get back there at all. I mean, that was kind of the whole first period. It was just mm -hmm. right there, tied up between the two on one and that little underhook there. First period goes to Jared Smith because he was able to get to his ties. He controlled the match. John Ross will have to make some adjustments. Yeah. But as much as Smith was able to control the first period, he didn't do a whole lot of scoring. So right. Turner Ross very much still in this, but Smith right away back to the tournament. And if we don't see any scores here in the first 30, 45 seconds, we'll probably see Smith put on the clock. There's a nice shot by Ross. Over the head. Smith sits the corner looking for exposure and he's gonna get it on the crotch lock. Comes all the way through too. So he's still in good position. To try and come behind. There he gets the right arm down and he's gonna end up on top with a chance to turn. No points because of the exposure. Looking for that lace though. Doing a good job progressing through it, but Whistle blows it dead, so it's three to nothing here. Minute 12 to go in this match. Now Ross has got some blood. Man, Ross did a really good job getting that leg quick, but the crotch lift executed really well for Smith. Yeah, you know, Ross got in so deep that it made sitting in the corner really easy. Baseline defense wasn't an option. Just four minute matches, plus you see Brandon Paulson, in Ross's corner, you know he's going to have a full tank of gas here for this last minute 12. Ross threatening to go back to that right leg. There's the two on one again. Yeah, that's going to keep Ross at bay, not going to allow him to shoot. He's grabbing forearm and circling up. Would like to see him grab that top hand to clear out of that tie. 
Smith can burn a lot of clock if he gets back to that two on one. And he's right back to it. Thirty seconds remain. Now the official's gonna break up. I got a feeling Smith's gonna try and get right back to that two on one. Yeah. He's been able to control the tie from there, and wh and why not? You know, why not get back there, there it and control is. it? Ross unable to clear this two on one. And that's gonna be it, the two on one. Plus the crotch lock exposure, the story of this match. Yeah, sometimes, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be pretty if it works. And that was the story there for Jared Smith. He found his control position, scored his points, and he's going home with the big old stop sign. Champion for Michigan. Yeah, really smart match there from Jared Smith. I got a feeling Coach Paulson is going to be working on some two-on-one defense with Turner Ross. Yeah. <laughs> in the coming months. Jared Smith, just the 14th Fargo champion in the 16U division for Michigan. Yeah, that's that complimentary of the Fargo Almanac. Shout out to Jason Bryant. We're going to be taking a quick break. When we come back, we'll have our 100-pound final between Seamus Reagan and Caleb Noble. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Finals coming to the mat in the red singlet. Seamus Regan out of Tennessee. And his opponent will be out of Illinois. See Caleb. Noble, see him on the screen there in that green and blue Illinois singlet. Noble with a fun one in his semifinal. Took out Sons of New Jersey, eight to seven. Came out to a strong lead, scored six points in the first period and had the defense in the second to get it done. Once again, this one important for the team race. Illinois currently in second place, nine points ahead of Iowa, who's in third place. And we are underway. Regan in the red, Noble in the green and blue. Noble darting in, low double, no points yet. Regan still threatening with the chest wrap, but it's gonna be too Noble. Now to Regan. Two and two for Regan, two hip tips. Now Noble looking to come out the back door. He's gonna get exposure there. Noble taking the lead on criteria. And we're right here. Is Noble gonna try and go back exposure once again or is he gonna wait this out for a stalemate? Waited out for a stalemate, an entertaining whew, first 43 seconds. Yeah, these guys aren't aren't sitting waiting around like our our last match. We already got eight points on the board, and Noble was able to get in on that double right away. Regan pretty pretty successful 
the defense there, able to score some exposure points. Might make Noble think twice about shooting that shot again. Regan doing a good job of taking ground here, and looks like he's gonna get a step out. Yes, he will. Noble step out. Oh, Noble step out, okay. I think he was able to pivot just in time, kind of force Regan to take that misstep there. Same, same attack here for Regan though, taking Noble to the edge. This time he will get the step out. Noble darting in, Regan catches him. Regan, you can tell, loves to take ground, march forward. Noble doing a good job of grounding himself here. He's gotta be careful he doesn't give up caution and one from this position, however. Grounded's a call, but the... Caution one was offered, but not confirmed. Yeah, not confirmed. And that does it for the first period, an entertaining one. Tennessee in the lead, five to five on criteria. Yeah, a lot of good action there in the first period. Makes you makes you wonder what's what's going to go down in the next two minutes. Are right. we going to see, you know, the pace continue to stay high, or are we going to see a little more, a little more slow pace as they settle in? Catch the breath for a bit. See, look over in the corner there, Team Illinois coach Zane Richards flew straight from Pretty busy man Budapest, Hungary where he was competing on the senior level right here to coach in Fargo. And that was coming from a camp in Colorado Springs shortly after making the world team as well, so. No rest for the wicked. And from headlock position, Regan holding on to that elbow tight, comes up to a two on one. Noble's gonna try and circle in here. Grounded and we're gonna get not grounded, one point on the step out. Noble coming up to his feet before going out of bounds there. So Regan taking the lead outright, six to five. And continuing to march forward with those inside ties. Yeah, we've, we've seen that, what, three or four times now where starting in the middle of the mat and Regan's just able to slowly plot him out of bounds. And could prove to be the difference as the, the match wears on. Even with overhook here, yes, yes. Regan is continuing to march forward and take ground now. Noble circles back to the center. There's a single leg attempt for Regan. Lat drop attempt from Noble, and he's going to give up four points there. It's probably not the defense you want to see. He's asking for a brick. I think he wants two instead of four. I don't know though, I mean, he, he tried the lat drop and went right to his back. Maybe went to his butt first. But it, but it was Regan's shot that forced that action. Right. Yeah. So, I'm not yeah, sure almost, if I love the brick here. Almost looked like a, you know, a YOLO lat drop, and maybe that's how they're gonna interpret it, even if it, that wasn't what Noble intended to do. Here we're going to get a replay of that. You see the single leg from Regan and the lat drop attempt from Noble went right to his back. Really, you know, if you if you think about the points that Noble scored, it was really all in that first first little flurry where he got the two two point moves and then the one on the step out. So it's been a minute since Noble's been able to get to his offense. Momentum definitely on the side of Regan yeah. here with under a minute to go. Kind of similar to Noble's semifinal, except in that one he was up 6-0. Okay, good challenge. Just a two-pointer. Okay. 
for Regan. He is still up by three points, eight to five. Uh, Noble able to catch his breath and comes out aggressively yeah. after the break. Regan low center of gravity, continuing to pressure forward. Noble circling back to the center. Noble's got to clear these underhooks here. Well, Regan's going to be able to continue to just march him forward. Yeah, Regan doing such a good job. Holding position, and really imposing as well. There's a, a lat drop attempt. A little bit better attempt there from Noble, but we can get end up on top. No fall, but this match is all but done. With just three seconds to go. We get up 10 to 5. And that's it. Seamus Regan is your champion. Tennessee with the champion. Gets the 10 to 5 victory. And the backflip. Yeah, Noble with a good opening flurry, but for the most part after that, it was all Regan. Here in this 100 pound final. Tennessee, that's just the third title for Tennessee. And we'll, in the 16 new freestyle, yeah. So we're going to get a replay of that action here from this bout before we head on up to 106 pounds. And here we see the last exchange. And the hand raise. And Seamus Regan is your champion. We're going to go to a quick break. And we'll be back with you for 106 pounds. Our 106 pound final on the screen. You'll see out of Ohio, Ray Burnett. Ray Burnett been on an absolute tear this tournament. Almost every match he's ended early by technical superiority. And his finals opponent will be out of Illinois, Bruno. Cassiope, Illinois, another finalist. Yeah, and this one, uh, a big team race, with big team race implications. Noble going down in the match before. Ohio trails Iowa by just five points. They currently sit in fourth place behind Iowa's in third. But Illinois is in second. They're nine points ahead of Iowa, 155 to 141. Your team points and Cassiope taking a little bonk to the head, I think, here earlier, swing his head for a second. You mentioned, you know, in our pre show, this is one of the matches you were really looking forward to. Burnett in his semifinal bout beat Cassiope's brother, Rocco. And he mentioned uh, Bruno's semi, just the ending was, was a wild one. Yeah, last second and lad drop. Cassiope. Kind of wrestles like his heavyweight brother, if I'm being honest. He, he loves the upper body ties. Yeah. He, he was locking up uh, overhooks and underhooks the entire match in his semifinal, and then at the last second, got his lap drop and secured the fall. One of the things to watch out for too, 
Burnett really favored his uh, left elbow. You see it has taped up the semifinal bout. Really it takes an injury time there. Let's see if it's a factor here in the finals. But that was on the leg. I'm not really sure why he backed out like he did, but that allowed Cassiope to get to the leg. And caution one offered, but it's going to be white paddled. No points yet, but Burnett was six seconds to score here before Cassiope is going to get a point on the shot clock. And there it is. First point of the match. And this is where Cassiope is comfortable in this over under. See him taking ground, blocking off Burnett's left elbow with that thumb block. Giving Cassiope the advantage, not allowing Burnett to circle back in. Cassiope with the leg attack. Burnett counters as the two go out of bounds. What's it going to be? Two blue offered, one red one offered. And two confirmed. Burnett was looking to his corner there for a moment, maybe asking for a brick, but they keep it in the corner. So it's three to nothing here as we approach the end of the first period. Heavy snap from Burnett right to the mixer. Two points, Cassiope holds him for a second. Burnett recovers and they go out of bounds but are grounded. So just two blue as time what expires. A what a flurry there, two red. What a flurry, excuse me, excuse yeah. me, yes, two red. <laughs> Man, to end the, end the period, and that was big for, for Burnett, because now it just puts it one score down, rather than the, you know, the you two You feel a lot better going into the break, yes. three to two versus down, three to zero. Mm -hmm. And I would like to go back and watch that two point sequence for Cassiope on the edge. Yeah. I'm not sure how uh, we ended up with two points there for Cassiope, but nonetheless, we got a good match on our hands. Two minutes to go. Burnett coming out attacking, looking for a dump. Cassiope holding him in front headlock. Cassiope with that left elbow trap, so we're going to get a stalemate. Another heavy snap from Burnett and runs right Ooh. through Cassiope. Transitions to a gut wrench, punches right then left. Back to the right, really driving his feet but not gonna get it. Oh, look at that, little trap arm. Got it once, no, did not get back to defensible position. That's gonna be another one though. Two more offered, but white paddle. So just two gut wrenches there for Burnett. Makes the score eight to three. Gray Burnett really opening this match up there with the takedown in two turns. As we, we know from a semifinal though, yep. Cassiope never out of a match. Don't call him out. Diving in, getting really extended here. Cassiope going to try and break that lock and come behind. Not going to be able to, so we're going to get a stalemate. With 41 seconds to go. Yeah, the urgency really picks up here for Cassiope. Down five. Needs to put together some points really quickly here. Yeah, but it looks like he's going up her body, digging that underhook. Shipping a warm, Burnett clubbing a little hard. Burnett going elbows in hard, you saw him. And pops high crotch, switches off to the double. Cassiope threatening with the chest wrap. Burnett, you can see him jumping, trying for four, but he's just going to get two. And I think that was a case of, you know, Cassiope really trying to force yeah. that upper body position, you know. You see him here standing straight up. So inside trip. Burnett went there. Yeah. So Burnett has to engage for these last couple seconds. Slip call. A formality with one second to go. 
because Gray Burnett is your Fargo champion. Yeah, impressive stuff there from Burnett. You know, Cassiope takes the early lead, builds a three-point lead early, but Burnett pretty methodically slowly comes back, gets on top, gets to his gut wrenches, and comes away with a 10-3 victory for the stop sign. Flips the hat backwards, and that win for Burnett will bring Ohio tied with Iowa for third place in the team race. Here we see some of the highlights from this match here. Got there's the two point for Cassiope on the edge. That could have been two there, but in the end it's Burnett coming out on top. We're gonna go to a quick break before our next pair of finals. We'll catch you back for 113 pounds in just a second. Here at 113 pounds. Says on your screen, Gray Burnett. That's not him. He's not wrestling another match. That's just Landon Sidden from Pennsylvania. His opponent will be Isaiah Harrison out of Colorado. Harrison with a big win over Connor Larkin in his semifinal, 12 to zero. Larkin was really on the tear. I was really impressed with him. And Harrison had no issues. So I'm excited to see what he can do here in a tough opponent on the Yes, I didn't, he was equally impressive in his semifinals over Horchuk. And start to finish, he get the 10-0 tech. And now we see him going to work here. Hasn't been rear standing, he's able to get the takedown. Silent strikes first. Sidon looking for leg lays. He does have it locked, but we're gonna go out of bounds. Yeah. He was pretty systematic with that leg lace in the semis. That's what he used to uh, rack up those points. Harrison staying low, now darting into a single leg. Comes up to the underhook. Sidon clears out. Sidon holding on to that, tri that right tricep of Harrison Hard, preventing him from coming around and scoring the takedown here. The officials going to put them back on their feet with 40 seconds to go in the first. Hard snap from Sidon, one direction, then the other. I like this movement from Sidon, head in the hole. Picks up the takedown, extends his lead to four points. Once again, going back to that leg race. Harrison a little bit slower to get up there. We approach the end of this first period. Another go behind attempt. Ooh, now he's got a cradle. He's gonna get it. There was time on the clock. And no, no time. fall. Just the two points on the exposure. We'll make the score six to zero. They've got eight on the board. Two and two. Did they give a takedown and then exposure? Yeah, that must be it. I did see the whistle, you know, throw up two and then throw up two again really okay. quick. I thought it was fast enough it was just two, but that's why I'm not an official. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you're, if you're Harrison's corner, do you challenge that? I don't know. Um, no, that, that, that's big though, because now 
a takedown finishes this Ends match. it, yep. And as we've already seen, Sidon can, he can strike quick. Hand fight from Sidon. Back in his front headlock position. Dresser dumped for four points for the tech fall. Harrison wanted continuation to pick up a couple points there, but not going to get it. So Landon Sidon, he was ranked number 11 in the country coming into this. This was a tough bracket. He might go up here a bit yeah. in these national rankings because he looked great here this week in the Fargo Dome. Yeah, really impressive tournament. Impressive uh, semi and finals there, putting together a lot of points. Land inside it. And really excited to watch him move forward as his career unfolds. See some highlights from that match. See the quickness on display here from Sidon as he gets the takedown here at the, the cradle. Final takedown there for the win. And so, Sidon is your winner at 113 pounds. And we'll be back with you here in just a second at 120 pounds. taking the mat on your screen in the white and red singlet out of California. Michael Romero and his opponent will be in the blue singlet out of Kentucky, Jaden Rainey. Jaden Rainey, a double Fargo champ last year in both freestyle and Greco. Fargo last year was kind of the breakout tournament for the Rainy Twins. Yep. Jaden won 106 in freestyle, 113 in Greco. So trying to go back to back. The two are good at folk style as well, but really excel in the international styles. But it's Romero who comes out firing here with the double leg. Rainy draping over top, fighting ankles. Now locking in the crotch. Close to exposure. Now he's going to get it. Nice defense there from Jaden Rainey. He was working for that cradle for a moment, but Romero wisely got that, got that leg back. And Rainey already with the exposure, so no points for coming around behind. And the quick parterre whistle puts the two back on their feet. Romero hasn't really been in a close match this tournament. 9-3 in the semis was his closest decision. Other than that, all tech falls all the way through the tournament. Rainey, on the other hand, he's been in some wild bouts. His round of 16 match with Geronimo Rivera, 17-16 bout. Quarterfinal bout, 4-2. And then Rainey, just for the fun of it, put up 17 more points right, in the semis. Wrist roll, wrist roll. Good, good, good. center here. Good, good. Out, shoots in, shot and double switched off to a single. Now he's got a cradle. Rainey pops his head out though. Rainey's so good defensively, keeping that left leg back. Romero elevating, trying to reach 
that far leg now and got five seconds. Position. Marino's and look wow. at the ground. Savvy wrestling there. Yeah, really good Jay job there. Marino. Knew what he had to do, knew how much time was left. And that's why he's up two to zero going yeah. into the break here. Really impressive defense. And he didn't just display the defense from, from one position. It was one position to the next position to the next. And on the edge of the mat there. Impressive stuff there from Jaden Rainey. But Romero has shown the ability to get to legs. And so you know, I'm sure we're going to see some good exchanges here as the wrestlers work their way back to the center of the mat in the second period here. Gets Romero's legs, can't get past his head defense though. Good. Control, control. Good. Good. Here it comes, here it comes. It's that headgear. The forehead play. <laughs> now Rainey is able to get past the head defense. Nothing yet. There's the two points for Rainey. And Romero holding on. He's going to give up two more on the exposure. Romero has to crawl forward, but now Rainey's in the leg lace. Gets one, and they go out of bounds. Jaden Rainey, just like that, now up eight to zero. Shopping space is coming, hands down. Hands down. Left hand, left hand. Left hand. I feel like the score should actually be 10 to nothing, but it's okay. We get some more wrestling. And I think they didn't put one two point score up for Rainey, but with 55 seconds to go, Rainey's in a really good position here. Seconds to go. Romero fires off an attack. Rainey looking for a re-attack. There it is. Ah, not yet. Rainey hooks the legs, pops his head out, and there it is. No doubt. Jaden Rainey puts it away. 10 to 0. Really impressive stuff. Jaden Rainey. He's on his way again. Another Fargo title. Jaden Rainey, free, Freestyle and Greco, Jaden Rainey just hits different. Yeah. Yep. Really impressive stuff. And now you see some of the replays there. You see some of the scores. That leg lace, the edge of the mat, and the final takedown to put it away. And the hand raise. Jaden Rainey is your champion at 120 pounds. We're going to take a quick and we'll be back before our 126 pound final. Pound finals on your screen from California. You see Leo Maestas and his opponent will be Timothy Kester, that blue singlet out of Bettendorf, Iowa. Low, low right away. 
Maestas in the white and red. Kester in the blue, and we are underway. Maestas wasting no time getting to the legs. Forcing Kester to drape over top and fight ankles. Maestas comes out the back door, elevates, looking for the trip. Now goes horseshoe finish. Great work there by Maestas. Yeah, both these wrestlers had some wild semifinal matches. Maestas won 14 to 12. Kester 12 to 8. So I'm thinking we're going to see some, uh, some see points. Some, see some points here. Maestas controlling ties right now. Nice single leg, once again, popping up and elevating. This time throws both legs off to the side. And no finish yet. He's gonna have to hook that near ankle. Kester still holding onto that left leg, preventing Massas from coming behind. Nothing yet, and Kester holds on for the stalemate. Yeah, that takedown looked Looked imminent there. Yes, so good, it did. Good defense from Kester. One shot, then two from Mastas, but not able to get past the head ends defense of Kester. Now he is back to that same single leg. Good baseline defense here this time from Kester. And another stalemate. Clock winding down here in the opening period. And that's how the first period will end. Yeah, story of the first period is just Maestas in on the in on a single leg. Yep. You know, I'd <laughs> like to go back, kind of count how long he was there, but Kester not able to get to his offense as a result of Maestas being in on his legs. Maestas is doing a good job of getting to inside control tie, but Kester doing a good job of controlling the wrist. Of Mass, and there you see him trying to go back to it, and that same single leg, and he finished this time. He's got a better angle this time. Now above the knee, elevating, Cradle. jumps Cradle. He's gonna get two points. Kester in danger here. This is pretty tight. Yep, Massa sinks his hips on top. Fall and off or confirmed. Leo Maestas is fired up. Flexes to the crowd, finishes his Fargo run with a fall, exclamation point. Man, what a way to do it. What a way to go out on top, get that stop sign. Really impressive stuff there from Leo Maestas. And the difference was his ability to get to the legs, his ability to impose his will, and there's the cradle. We see the finish from the hand raise. And Leo Maestas, our champion at 126 pounds, will be back with you here at second four, 132 pounds.
U Fargo Finals. We're going to be with you here for 132 pounds in 50 seconds. Junior Finals on the tip of the mat right now. 132 pounds. We'll see Jaden James versus Manuel Saldate. James out of New Jersey, Saldate out of Nevada. Saldate having a really good tournament. He's only given up 18 points this entire tournament, and they all came in one match. This round of 16 match with Paro of Minnesota, the score is 23 to 18. Yeah, that's impressive. Besides that, he's gone 12 to 0, 10 to 0, 11 to 0, 10 to 0, 10 to 0 over his opponents. And there you see Jaden James in that red singlet out in New Jersey. And Manuel Saldate coming to the mat, down the stairs, through the smoke in the blue singlet, out of Nevada. James has looked really impressive in his own right this tournament. Started off with four tech balls before winning 15 to four in the quarters and then eight to zero in the semis. Ooh, nice duck there from James. Gets the leg, brings it way up and yeah. wanted, wanted to take down, kind of tripped himself up there on the edge and just gets the step out. Man, he made that look so so smooth, so easy, getting the leg there. Yeah, he was hitting that in the semifinals too. Really good duck on James. Two on one, throw by for Sadate, uses it to get to the legs. James trying to expose with his legs. Oh, Sadate going body lock, right into a gut wrench. He ain't get the gut wrench. He is getting close to that. Yes, he is. I don't know how James isn't going over. There he does. Another one? No. And they go out of bounds. No points for James there. As he steps over. So six to one is going to be our score. Yeah, really impressive there. And, you know, it really resulted from James trying to scramble out of a position where maybe he could have gave up two points. But trying to trying to scramble, trying to get to a better position, and Saldate makes them pay for it. And Saldate pulling Wizard on the edge, but goes out of bounds. So another step out for James. Four points. There's that duck again. Wow. As soon as Soldate touched him and came in, he timed it perfectly. No takedown yet. Needs to get a head, <laughs> elbow, or a knee down. They're running around the yeah. circle. Finally, James breaks him down. Pick up his first takedown of the match. And you don't, you know, on these on these high, these big stages, this big level here, you don't usually see two of those smooth ducks in one match. You usually see it one time. Okay, fool me once. Yep. Talking about high stage, a high gut wrench there. Yeah. From James, twice a score at seven, so Dante is still in the lead on criteria with that four pointer. Yes. He's got that in his back pocket. Four point criteria. See if he can score any more points here. But as I say that, James puts Saldate on his back here, but here he's gonna come to a close, eight to six. You mentioned James maybe trying an unconventional defense, costing that four-pointer uh, for Soldate. That time, Soldate trying to go head yeah. cartwheel defense allowed James to step over and pick up his exposure. Man, eight to six in a two-minute first period. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, this, this match is one where we're going to want to watch the highlights, too. We've seen some ducks and big fours. We're only halfway through. So Dante pressuring forward with the two on one, switches to underhook and gets one point on the step out. Headlock! Stay on the elbow! 
Tadate controlling the right elbow of James. Elbow down! Watch the drag! Drag attempt for James, uses it to get to the leg. Now elevating. So thought they can be tricky for here. He's trying to pull James down with the wizard, and he does. One point offered and confirmed for James. Putting him back up by two points. A two-pointer would put Soldate in the lead on criteria. Elbow pass. Soldate goes two on one. James counters with a single, comes up to the underhook. As Soldate pulls Wizard. James hooking the far side. He's gonna have to get that arm out there. James close to two. Soldate still with the Wizard, so no points awarded yet. It's about to pop out. There it does. There's the two points for Jaden James. Eleven to seven now. Thirty-three seconds to go. And Salvate does have the only four point move of the match. So if he gets to eleven, he'll have criteria. Nice single leg here from James. Just a tap and go. He's just trying to burn the clock here. Avoid giving up a chest wrap. Oh. That could have been big for Sodate, but James is going to come out on top, pick up two more, and that pretty much ices it now with 10 seconds to go. Yeah. And really fun match here. You, this is where you wish there was a, a three minute period right. for, for matches like this. Great match by Manuel Sodate. Chase Pam and Gold Rush doing great things in Nevada, but. Today is Jaden James's day. He is your winner, 13 to seven. Yeah, great tournament for James and impressive match there for him as well. Putting up 13 points in a Fargo final. He earned that stop sign. He'll go over, love to see the great sportsmanship, shake the coach's hand, shaking everybody's hand, referee's hand. I wanna shake your hand. <laughs> Not the Marines. And getting the hat. And Jaden James, our champion at 132 pounds. I would love to see those duck hunters again. James hit in the first period. Yeah, we'll see if any of those are part of our highlights here on our screen. We're going to see the big four. And there's the high gut from Jaden James. And. That's 132 pounds. We'll be back with you here in just a minute for 138. in the blue and we are underway here at 138 pounds. Gleason <laughs> coming out, looking for that two on one, Stifler squaring up, grabbing far elbow. <laughs> Yeah. 
Gleason sticking with this two on one. Taking Stifler all over the map. We've seen this in a couple 16 new finals so far. If you can get to a two on one and keep it, you can really control a match. Yeah. And that's going to put Stifler on the activity clock first. He needs, he has 30 seconds to score. He's trying to go back to that two on one. Stifler knows, doesn't want it. Doesn't get put in the two on one, but not able to score in the 30 seconds. So activity clock point goes to Gleason. Stifler really picking up his hand fight here, looking to force his control positions. He does get to a shallow underhook on the right side, but we're going to see the period come to a close here with the score at one nothing. And this is, you know, perfect example coming off our 132-pound match where we saw whatever 20 points go up on the board. <laughs> styles, <laughs> Styles make fights, right? We got some, we got some defensive styles here. A little more of a, uh, more of a chess match, we'll call it, right? We'll see here in, in the second period if we don't see any points go on the board, we'll likely see Gleason get his turn on the activity clock. We are underway here in the second. There's going to be our first technical points of this match. A step out to Gleason. So we're scoring now 2-0. And it looks like it fired something up in Stifler. He comes out with some heavy hands. Now drops down to the leg. Looking to come behind, but came up to the seatbelt, which allowed Gleason to pull Wizard. Get back up to his feet. Hand fight. Get back to 2 on 1. Above the elbow. Stifler now looking for a 2 on 1. Dueling 2 on 1s. <laughs> And Gleason wins the two-on-one battle as he's looking to come behind. Stiffer does a good job of squaring up. They go out of bounds. Grounded, no points. Gleason really doing a good job forcing his two on one here. And that's been the difference so far in this match. Stifler really not able to work anything from the ties. Oh, that's a four. Grab Stifler, got to the body. Offered four confirmed. Stifler got to the body and make Gleason pay with the four pointer. Only with. 35 seconds to go in this match. He's going to need to get some offense going now. Yeah, a two-pointer won't do it for Gleason. He needs three points. Still for pressuring in with the underhook. One offered, two offered, one confirmed. Gleason throwing the kitchen sink at Stifler here, but it's too little, too late. Blue Stifler out of Georgia, your champion, five to two. Runs over, gives his coaches a quick hug before he comes back to the center to get his hand raised. We mentioned, you know, 
a little bit more of a chess match, a little more tie-up battle, but it really it was one offensive exchange, the four-point on the edge of the map. That was the difference for Blue Stifler. And because of that, he's bringing home stop sign. Back to Georgia, that was the stop sign for Stifler. And here we see some match highlights. There's the uh, two on one for Leeson. And then there's the four point move on the edge of the mat for Stifler. He comes out on top. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with you for our 145 pound fight. Welcome back, feed Daniel Heiser on your screen in the red and black out of Wisconsin and his opponent out of Pennsylvania, Melvin Miller. I don't know if I highlighted it in the our quick pre-match, pre-finals show, but if I didn't, I meant to highlight this. And this is the one, the final side circles. Melvin Miller, a really good young talent I like out of Pennsylvania, but look at that. Danny Heiser comes out swinging. Wisconsin's lone finalist here picks up the first takedown. He's got a leg well, nice. locked up. Woo! Gets big with it. And you don't see that finish too often on the lace, but it's fun to watch. He, he was quick and aggressive with the new set. He popped it up quick and go under. Nice work. Heiser out to a 40 0 lead. Already off to a better start to their trials match where they met. Melvin Miller won that one 10 to 0. In just a minute 33. Let's go do it! And Miller on the board with that takedown. Single leg for Miller holding on to that tricep, pops his head out. He's got a trap arm. And this could be trouble for Heiser. Yes, it is. They go out of bounds, so just one gut wrench. No, two. They allowed to continue. No white paddle on the second one. Uh, so eight to four. Keep moving. Keep moving. Snap there, snap. Underhook throw by from Miller. Hasn't popped his head out yet. There he does to secure the takedown. So Heiser came out early, scored the first four points, but 10 straight now for Melvin Miller. Ten seconds ago, we'll see if one of these guys tries to sneak one in late. Heiser shoots, but not going to finish. So ten to four will be our score at the break. I told you I was excited about this match, particularly Ooh. Melvin Miller. Yeah, he, he's part of the Bishop McCourt squad. I believe he's a freshman there, Bishop McCourt. I had not watched him yet in person coming in here to Fargo and had the pleasure of calling both his semifinal and his final here. Yeah, he's a you know really great young talent and at 145 pounds, only you know 15 years old, you gotta imagine. He's got a pretty big frame on him. He's gonna continue to move up in weight. But and, you know impressed with him there. Slow start but doesn't phase him, comes back and scores 10 straight points. Heiser cross body high crotch stuck here on his knees trying to pull himself in as Miller drapes over top now Heiser switches off to the double he's gonna have to hook those feet but Miller's doing a good job of 
Grabbing those ankles, preventing it. Now Heiser kicks his right foot out. And oh, stalemate. Wow. wow. Okay, two is offered. No, white powder. I don't know how that was. Why did they stop that? As soon as Heiser was able to kick that leg free, just about to finish. Miller quickly gets behind Heiser, finishes the takedown, and now just one turn away from a tech fall. He's got a high gut wrench locked up, not going to force it though. Heiser with the slide by attempt, but Miller drops down Miller to the legs. Heiser tries to Get sit position, there. but Miller's got the double to take down. Seems inevitable job, here. Mel. There it is. Melvin job, Miller Mel. of Bishop McCourt, Pennsylvania. Your winner. Yeah. Tech ball. 14 unanswered points there after going down four to nothing. Really impressive offense for Miller. Job, and looking Melvin. forward watching him as his career unfolds. A lot to be excited about there. Melvin Miller, great offense, both from his feet and parterre. Melvin Miller gets a stop sign. Great job, Melvin! We're gonna see some highlights here. You see the trap arm. Takes it over once. And twice. That was early in the first period. There's the nice duck. And the hand raise. Melvin Miller is your champion, 145 pounds. Moving up to 152 pounds, as you see, taking the mat on your screen. Kyler Knack out of Gilbertville, Iowa, ranked number 17 for high school rankings. And his opponent out of Dublin, Ohio, Grayson Woodcock. Tyler Knack been really impressive all day. Very dominant on his way to the finals. And we're underway. Knack in the red. Woodcock in the blue. Reattack by Knack. And Woodcock attempts a cutback, and he's going to get two points off of it. Four. four. Knack did two blue, and we're gonna get a challenge break. Knack is, is dirty with that cutback. He hit it in the semifinals too. By dirty, I mean slick, not intentionally trying to hurt you. Not, yeah, not, not a bad sport. So we're gonna take a look at the replay here, at least in the arena. Obviously, Nax moves, he forces no, it. Woodcock moved. But did, but did Woodcock change the direction enough of Nax? Yeah. Yeah, Nax move on the single leg, and then Woodcock coming through <laughs> with the cut back. Nax actually 
lucky that right knee could have been hurt. Yeah, I'm curious. So if this will work out 42 the other way. Initiating the action with the single leg. You know, I don't hate that call. If you hit a double leg, you take somebody to their back and they hit a lat drop, you get four and then they get two. Right. It seems like a similar similar thing to me. Although you could argue Woodcock's direction was completely changed. But now it's Woodcock getting to the legs. Trying to get big out the back door, no points. And that kicks his leg free. Knack looking for a gut wrench. Not gonna get it, and Woodcock, I think, hurt his hand. He immediately signaled something to his corner after the takedown, and then he immediately signaled for entry time after the parterre. Yeah, I think it's neck. Back or shoulder. His neck. Yeah. Hopefully, just a stinger. Yeah, this has been a fun match so far. We're, you know, we're just 57 seconds in. We've seen nine points go on the board. This guy's been letting it fly. Really going after it. You hate to see an injury cut this match short. Both these guys wrestle for solid high school programs within their state. Knack for Don Bosco, Gilbertville in Iowa. Woodcock for Dublin Kaufman in Ohio. Winning a state title for the Dons this year in Class 1A. Some team points on the line here. Obviously, as Iowa and Ohio are currently tied for third place with 146 points, Iowa will have two more in the finals with Martinson and Drayshawn Ross. So interesting, they're checking out his neck for a little while and they taped his uh, wrist hand up as well. So, but now Woodcock's back to the center. He's ready to go. Firing once, then twice, gets it on the second one. Woodcock turns down before giving up four, so just two points. Yeah, good job there by Mack stringing one and two attacks together. Able to convert. seconds to go here in the first period. See if one of these guys tries to sneak one in late. They will not, so we will go into the break with the score set at 9-2 to two in favor of Mac.
Yeah, a lot of action in that first period. You saw the big flurry that produced the challenge, and then Knack able to get his offense going a little bit after that. So we'll see if Woodcock encounters maybe fighting through being a little dinged up. But we're back to the center and we're ready to get our second period underway. Digging left side underhook. Get him under you! Head on the far side though. Tries to throw by Woodcock, kicks out. A lot of level changes here from Woodcock. Head taps, there he fires off the tag. One, two, one, two! Do you know what three up and three down means to you? Yeah. The end of an inning. Okay. The end of an inning. You didn't see good morning for now. Now a minute in, still no score in this second period. Both guys struggling to get past the head hands defense of the other. Yeah, you wonder, you know, for if you're Max Corner, he comes back to the center, say, hey, hold position, don't force anything. Yeah, Russell, smart match. Right. And Knack is, or excuse me, Woodcock is really good with that counter. If you know he can get four points off of that counter, don't shoot that single leg. And Woodcock still really hasn't fired off a legit attack yet this period. A couple of half shots, but at some point he's going to have to commit here with just now 10 seconds to go. Knack looks content just to hold position. Kyler Knack, Don Bosco Gilbert for Immortals Wrestling Club. And you have a Fargo champion. Impressive match for him there. Big four to start, and then able to string some offense together in the first period, second period. Rest of that smart period, held position, strong defense, and he's going back to Iowa with a stop sign. And that puts Iowa five points ahead of Ohio in the team race now at 151, and just four points behind Illinois. Illinois will have another finalist coming up here at 160 with Iowa's two at 195 and 285. There you see the opening. That Flurry, cut back. That cut back. And the double off the mat. And Kyler Knack, the hand raised. That is our 152 pound finals. We'll take a short break. We'll be back for 160 pounds in just a moment. Red Singlet takes the mat first, and he will face off against Illinois' Aaron Stewart. Norman, two-time Tennessee State champion, going to be a junior in high school. Stewart, only just going to be a sophomore. This was one of the matches I mentioned in the pre-show that I was really looking forward to watching. I've been really impressed with both of these guys so far this tournament. Yeah, for Norman, how long is it going to be till he takes a shot? I'm going to I'm going to say over under five seconds. 
likes to get his offense going early. And we are underway. <laughs> uh, Stewart didn't like uh, the kind of the, the slap glove there. Yeah. From Norman. So the slap comes in just three seconds. We're sending the over to hit on your five second yeah. shot, man. Maybe, uh, maybe playing a little more defense here. Smarter, but yeah, there it is. And firing off that single leg, coming up underhook, but Stewart defends. Norman back to the shot once again. Stewart defends now. He fires in, drops back down. Horseshoe finish. No points yet. Needs to get a knee or an elbow down. There's a knee. Stewart on the board first with the takedown. Stewart always looks so calm and relaxed. Yeah. Out there. Stewart doesn't like those head taps, but doesn't have any problem with it because he changes levels and quickly finishes on Norman. I need one! Stewart doing a really good job, kind of waiting for the action to come to him, and then when it does, he capitalize on it. Okay, hand position! Hand position, clear to time! Nice re-attack there from Stewart. Looking for four, he's gotta be careful, doesn't get stepped over. Norman threatened there, but Stewart's gonna finish. And the official puts him back on their feet with 23 seconds to go. And Norman firing from way out once, twice. Get on that. Gotta be careful. Stewart's countered him there before. Almost did there, but Norman able to catch that underhook. Rotate half position attack! Yeah, really impressive first period from Stewart. Time's out, so no points on the board for Norman in the first. All Stewart, 6-0. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, Stewart does a great job. Just really staying relaxed, stays in great position, and as Norman has you know, fired off his attacks, Stewart's made him pay. He's playing right in Stewart's hand. Just staying ready, and as soon as Norman strikes, that sets up Stewart's reattacks. shot from Norman and Stewart in good position to counter here Norman sucking himself back in Stewart sitting corner with the chest wrap no points yet Stewart's gonna take Norman through for two points as they go out of bounds yep to confirm Shot caution and one offered, and it's going to be confirmed. So that'll make the score nine to zero, and Stewart now just one point away from the tech fall. Stewart shakes it off. go behind Norman tries to square nice up but that'll be four it. points 13 to 0 tech fall 
super impressive match there from Aaron Stewart. Had an answer for everything that Max Norman threw at him. Stewart with the 13 and nothing technical superiority win. Champion for Illinois, and that's big for the team race, right, JD? Yep, that'll force Iowa to win their two remaining finals if they want to get second place. Pennsylvania locked up the team title. Illinois, and we got Iowa, Ohio. Now, Iowa's going to be a big favorite at 195 with Treshawn Ross. But 285, that, one, that one's going to be contested. Yeah, and there we see the match highlights for Stewart, that final four for the title. That's our finals match at 160 pounds. We're going to move up to 170 in just a moment. We're going to catch you with a quick break, and we'll be right back with you. Finals. We are at 170 pounds. Adrian Reyes out of California. Reyes in the white and red singlet. Out of Clovis, just 15 years old. Will be a junior in high school next year. And his opponent will be out of Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Hunter. Snyder going to be a freshman at Greater Latrobe High School in the fall. Reyes in the white and red, Snyder in the blue, and we are underway at 170 pounds. Straight on double for Snyder. No finish yet. Reyes will go on with that wizard. Some good defense there. For Reyes. Reyes likes to get to that right side underhook, work his offense from there. Pulls front head, looking for the go behind, runs ways, throws Snyder to the mat. <laughs> Not going to finish, but will get one point on the step back. I call that a throw out, and Snyder again. With that straight on blast double takes Reyes to his butt, but Reyes able to hold on with the wizard now. Turning all the way around in position to finish. Snyder tries to switch to come out on top, but Reyes finishes the takedown. Now Reyes looking for a gut wrench, not going to get it, so it still remains 3 to 0. Really impressive defense from Reyes so far. Snyder loves that straight on blast double. That time, Reyes felt it a little better. Yeah, he's been close a few times, but hasn't been able to finish just yet. This time, single leg. And Reyes looked like he exposed there. Two blue is offered already, and it is confirmed. So, if Snyder comes around here, no points. But we're going to get a stalemate anyways. Thirty-five seconds to go. There's that straight on double. This time it's low. Snyder in better position here to finish. Reyes still threatening with the chest wrap. Now looking to lock in the crotch and come off to the side. Two is offered. White paddle. White paddle. Nothing. And Reyes comes out on top. Now almost with the trap arm. Reyes did a really good job kind of slowly working his hips out there. And was able to counter for two of his own. So five to two. 
look, you have to know when you're beat and when to turn down, but also just as importantly, you have to know when you're not beat yeah. and when you can hold on to an ankle and switch the position like Reyes did there. And we've, we've seen it a couple times, you know. Snyder doing a great job penetrating, getting to the legs, but Reyes, a little bit, a little bit more crafty defense and we've seen two takedowns off of Snyder's offense. Reyes punching underhooks. Snyder just continuing to shoot from way downtown and successfully gets the legs. Finishing has been a different story again. Okay, that time two is offered. Two confirmed. Two, two blue was confirmed, so it should be one point for Reyes. Yeah. Coming out on top, and there's two more. So eight to four now. And that time, Snyder able to finish, but he traded two for three points as Reyes was able to come out on top and... And we're right back to it. Turn now, Reyes slipping head underneath. Looking to come out the back. <laughs> Again, Snyder coming out in front. Reyes slipping his head underneath. And we're going to get a stalemate. Reyes a little bit slower to get up yeah, here. Looking a little tired. Snyder not looking tired as he blasts in on another double. But Reyes again able to get the ankles. He's going to hold on here. Snyder looking to finish with the exposure crotch lock, but can't do it. Something tells me we're going to get back into that position at least one more time with that low double. Two seconds until he shoots. There it is. This time just a single. Reyes is in good position here, but Snyder doing a good job of keeping his head underneath Reyes' leg. No points yet. Snyder going to have to pop his head out above the right leg of Reyes and stalemate. We're going to see a brick here. With only 32 seconds left, every and every point super valuable. So true. This does this does give Reyes a bit of a breather here. Yeah, it looks like he's slowing down a little bit. Playing a lot of defense with Snyder in on his legs pretty much the whole match. And here's the position in question. Looked like I can't tell from that angle. Yeah, looks like Reyes exposed. is going crotch lift. Kind of slips through. This is considered similar to, say, a head pin situation. It's a mixer where you can expose yourself if you're trying to expose your opponent without giving up exposure points. Or is it because Snyder shot the single leg? Right. If you expose trying to counter and aren't successful, you give up two points. And that's what, you know, that's what I'm a little unsure on. I mean, clearly breaks 90 degrees. And, you know, I think they're going to give two here for blue, but we'll see. Third party officials, none of the officials on the mat taking part in this review. So they're taking a good long, hard look at it. And they will go to blue. So good challenge. Coach Pe Pletcher and Coach Headley. And I think it's just one takedown here is the difference. I believe if... Reyes, Reyes has two ones in there. Okay. He's got a, a step out and then he came out on top. Yeah. That one time. I think Snyder's just got the twos. So I believe if he gets to eight points, he'll hold criteria. So Reyes going to have to be strong defensively. You know Snyder's going to shoot here in about two seconds. Yep. Can Reyes defend? He should be feeling fresh after this long break. Or fresher, at least. Yeah, he there it is. There's the shot. 
Reyes breaks Snyder down flat. Good defense here. Should try and slide back a little bit. The Snyder's getting to the lock, pulling himself in. This time he converts. Yep, got the exposure. And two more. Two and two there. Yeah, that's going to be it. And kind of a weird finish there, as I think they might have thought they heard a whistle, but does not matter. Adrian Reyes of Clovis, California, your champion, 12 to 6. Yeah, really good defense there from Reyes. Shown off. Snyder, super offensive, getting in on the legs over and over and over again, but Reyes able to turn defense into offense and comes out and he is he's spent well, they, they wrestled that entire match yeah they did yeah he earned every bit of that really fun match there's that first little throw out and we'll see the scramble through for the takedown saw some gut wrenches as well and Reyes gets the title at 170 pounds we're gonna take a quick break and we will be back with you for our 182 pound final. will be a sophomore at Camden County High School. Yakima Hollis in the blue. Wilder in the red. Shake hands and we are underway at 182 pounds. Wilder pulling front headlock. Yakima Hollis holding on to the left tricep. Keeping Wilder at bay. And now Wilder putting the Akmalis on his hip, trying to expose him. Got to watch that shoulder. Wilder continuing to try and finish, and I think he does on the edge. Two off for white paddle, off for white paddle, so no points. Yakima Hollis, kind of interesting position, had his right arm locked up but trying to fight through a single leg with his left arm. Yakima Hollis going to go on the clock first. No points being scored in the first 54 seconds. One of the things you notice about Jack Mahalis, real comfortable, really calm as he's wrestling. Shot from the outside there. Start off as a double switches off to the left leg of Wilder. Kind of a similar position that they were in before. Good defense here from Wilder. And to go out of bounds, grounded. One offered. One red. Interesting. I know one. That was for the activity clock. Yep, okay. Yeah, for a moment I thought they were calling. I thought they were calling the step out. Yep, Doc Mahal is unable to score in that 30 seconds. So Wilder with the first points of the match. 
as time winds down here in the first period. That does it for the first period. The activity clock point, the only points of the match so far. Yeah, so we'll likely see in the second period you know, if there's no points that go up on the board. We'll see Wilder put on the clock. And he was close to scoring in that first exchange, so he certainly has shown that he's capable. So both wrestlers make their way back to the middle of the mat, and we're ready to go in the second period. Yeah, the two spent a decent amount of time there in that front headlock position in period number one. Shoot from the outside. There's another shot from Deok Mollis, and once again, we end up in front headlock. Deok Mollis doing a good job of staying squared up here. While they're threatening the exposure, but Deok Mollis puts himself in, tries to settle back, put his head in position. Once again, no points. So we'll likely see this go maybe another five, 10 seconds. And yeah, Wilder's probably gonna go on the shot clock here. And yep, there it is. Wilder on the clock, he'll have 30 seconds to score. A whole lot of urgency 10 seconds in. No. Obviously, one point for Yak Mahalis would put him on the in the lead on criteria. Back in front headlock, Yak Mahalis again holding on to that elbow while they're able to clear, but Yak Mahalis gets the leg. There's the point for Yak Mahalis. He's now in the lead and trying to come out the back door. Fighting near ankle here. Close to giving up exposure, not breaking 90 yet. And ooh, Diak Mahalis really hurting his knee there. With short time, but caught no exposure. Caution and one for Diak Mahalis. For Wilder going against the joint. So 17 seconds left in this match. Diaco Mahalas in uh, some obvious pain here. They're helping him back up. Yeah, he knows he's got 17 seconds to go here. He's going to tough this out. And, and, and now down by one, Wilder has to do something. He hasn't taken a shot yet this match. Okay, we're going to get a, a brick. I don't know about this brick. Because only down by one, you can pull front head and look, work for a step out. Right. And you would take the lead on criteria. You lose this challenge, you're down by two, and you need a takedown. Yeah, so they're going to take a look at it, and the call on the map was caution in one. You know, we'd say like an illegal move, you know, going against the joint here, and the ref was motioning for it as it was happening. And he was in a pretty good position to see. And so that, yeah, this is where. We're showing the replay here on the big screen in arena. And they're gonna, I, and so Georgia challenges and they're actually going to go against them because they got Wilder on a, a scissor oh, so, so it wasn't going against the team no 
scissors and illegal body scissors. So they start in parterre, which is huge because they, they might just let Diak Mahalis finish out the match on top, and he's going to pick up four. While they stood up trying to make something happen, as Diak Mahalis was locked around the body, he gripped and ripped it, picked up four, finished off this match with an exclamation point. Elijah Diak Mahalis of New York, 82 pound champion. Yeah, and he was fired up there. You know, mentioned doesn't show too much emotion, but he was fired up getting that win. And you know, he could have just held on on top, but he chose instead to end the match with an exclamation point. He chose Big violence. Four. Yeah, he chose some violence there at the end. And he is a Fargo champion at 182 pounds as we check out some of the highlights of that match. You know, not too many highlights, but Big Four at the end ends it with some excitement. And Giacomo Hollis is the champ at 182 pounds. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back for 195 pounds. Welcome back to our 16U finals here. We are ready for 195 pounds. And on your screen, you see a face you might not recognize, but if that mask was off. Pretty intimidating up there with the mask, <laughs> not coming down the stairs. Yeah, Drayshawn Ross should be well known to us. One of the uh, top young wrestlers in the country, ranked number nine. 195 pounds. And Ross's opponent, Jake Conroy from Pennsylvania. Conroy going to be a junior next year. Ross going to be a sophomore in high school. Ross trying to go back to back, won this weight a year ago. And is really putting up a, an OW performance so far in this tournament. Has yet to give up a point. 10-0, 10-0, 11-0, 10-0. Yeah, and he's just a really impressive wrestler. Being so young. And you see it there. Defense to offense. Right to the gut. Offensively, defensively, on the feet, plus Parterre, he can do it all. No go on the second one there as Conroy floated it. Ross does have to be careful and step over on gut wrenches. You see that sometimes, you know, guys get up by eight or nine points. They really try for that last gut wrench. Maybe force it a little bit, get stepped over. Cost you the match, because if you get stepped over in the right position, you can get pinned. Conroy looking for the reattack. He's going to pick four. up four points. Wow. Yeah, we've talked a lot about Ross. Hyped him up here in this first minute, but Conroy definitely the best opponent Ross has seen so far in this tournament. Yeah, Conroy says, hey, not so fast. Not so fast, my friend. Don't more, so. Continues to attack. This time, I think Ross is going to get four. Yep. And Conroy for a moment was maybe asking for a break. This corner is at the no, 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 no. not just good at wrestling and two-sport athlete at Dutch High School. I know he's getting Division I football offers as well and tacking on two more points. They're on the double leg. Plus, caution and one offer that is not confirmed. Yeah, you mentioned good at football. Saw a little, uh, a little football tackle there, straight on double, drive his feet. You really saw the football offers come after he won, won that title. As a uh, as a freshman, the upper weight, you don't see that too often. 
Single leg. Ross with the easy finish. So he'll go into the break up 12 to 4. All of Conroy's points coming off that one four point move. Coach Fellers and Coach Siebel giving Ross those instructions right through the mask. Love to the shot for Trey Sean Ross, and that'll do it just like that. 16 to 4. And he says, hey, final. I'm done with this mask. I'm the champ. Really impressive tournament for Trey Sean Ross. Yeah, cruises through this 195 pound bracket to go back to back 2022 2023 Fargo champion. Big things ahead for this kid, Jayshon Ross. Poses for the picture with the Marine. And bringing home another stop sign, Jayshon Ross, as we'll see a couple of the highlights from that match. There's the gut wrench. There's the I, oh, oh, back the back oh. Oh. <laughs> I didn't come through because one could be a Sean Ross with the backflip almost uh, over over rotated there. A little too strong for his own good there. That's yeah. so that's 195 pounds. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with you for singlet. He's going to be a sophomore at Mount Vernon High School. To third at 2023 Ohio State Championships. And his opponent will be out of Florida in the blue singlet. Michael Mako will be a sophomore at Cardinal Gibbons High School. We got some Mako chants coming from the crowd. He's got his own little cheering section there. Mako in the blue, Taylor in the red. We'll shake hands and we are underway. These two familiar with each other. They've already hit two times this off season. Mako winning both nine to four in NHSA Nationals honors in folk style, and then 12 to zero at National Women's Honors, obviously freestyle. Mako going big, four! Man, I want to see a replay of that. I was with maybe the highlight of the 16U finals so far here. That was some impressive strength. Wow. Mako, of course, the son of legendary heavyweight Steve Mako, and his semifinal. Man, he looked like his dad hitting the ice. Oh! <laughs> Taylor got in position with the slide. Oh, oh, oh. Mako said, I don't care. Oh. 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 Oh, Michael Mako making a statement. And then the ankle there pick. There it is. Michael Mako with the performance of the night. So wow. In just 59 seconds. Michael Mako. You know, big, big old smile from the head, Steve. Mike, give me Michael Mako with the highlight reel. Now he's going for the back play. Woo! Man, talk about. 
what a performance. I want to see him wrestle for more than 59 seconds. <laughs> right? Hey, can you like turn Michael this man. way? Big things to come for that young man. 10-0 Tech Fall. He is your champion. And he did that so fast. I don't know if our production team had time to throw the replays, but here they are. And there we see that huge four. And then another one for Mako. And here's the flip. And he is your champion. 220 pounds. We have one more finals. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with you for our heavyweight finals. back 285 pounds coming to the map first Jacob Levy out of Georgia 2023 Georgia state champion just 15 years old he's gonna be a junior at Carrollton High School yeah, he's 16 years old and his opponent will be Cooper Martinson out of Altoona, Iowa. Fourth at this year's state tournament. And this is our last finals. The heavyweight bout. Levy in the red, Martinson in the blue. Underway here. Levy coming out strong Ooh. early with the four pointer. Four four move. So I'm saying Mako might be OW, but Levy's Levy's giving him a run for his money. He's having a great tournament and wasting no time. Again here, already up six to zero. Yeah, he looks like he wants to go right back to it. Team Illinois behind Levy as well. If Robinson does win this, Team Iowa will surpass Team Illinois for second place in the team race. They currently sit at third, four points behind him. Robinson slowing Levy down a bit here, digging under hooks, taking him to the zone, and taking him out, taking him out of bounds. Levy might have a bit of a quickness advantage on Martinson, but Martinson has a size yeah, advantage. Yeah, noticeable size advantage for sure. Yeah, so if he can get through his underhooks and his highs, he's going to slow Levy down. Levy levels him into the glass and right through Martinson for another takedown. Again, Levy beats Martinson's head hands defense. Comes out behind. He's now just one turner, take down away from a tech ball. Martinson's got to keep those arms low, try and stop Levy. There, dig those underhooks, and Levy clears it, pops his head underneath. Martinson's going to get four points there. Okay, four. Red offered, two blue. Four blue is going to be what's confirmed. Yeah, big challenge here. If it's if it is four two, match is over. Right. A lot of times, 
you will see four for initial attacker, two for counter. Now, did Martinson change Levy's direction? That's what a lot of times they look for. He might have. They're showing the replay here in the big screen. Levy was kind of running one direction, and then Martinson took him over to the other side, over his left shoulder. Now, obviously, Levy did initiate this attack, so I'm still not sure what they're going to call it. Yeah. And Levy looking to become just the ninth 16U champ in men's freestyle in Georgia's history. We saw Stifler as the eighth. Okay, and Ford Blue is confirmed, so Martin's going to get another point. Plus a challenge as well. And they're a towel off. A little towel off for the big boys. So Martinson back in this now trailing by three points, but he's got to stop the level changes of Levy. He has not been able to really do so so far. Levy too fast for him, too explosive. Yeah, and you wonder, does does Levy think a little bit differently about trying to blow through him after giving up that after four. giving up that big four? Right. I got a hunch he's going to stick to the game. Yeah. There it comes. Get ready. And Levy jumping the gun just a little bit. He is not slowing down. Levy faking in and out, looking for a single leg, gets to the lock, drives Martin out of bounds, looking for four, not going to get it, just one point, the whistle did blow. Before Levy was able to finish that attack, so one point on the step out extends his lead to four points with under 30 seconds to go here in the first period. Good movement for Levy there. Yeah, had Martinson on his toes there as Martin, Martinson was digging for underhooks. So that brings us to a close in the first period. Levy up 11 to 7. Really, it's been mostly Levy Martinson picking up four points on that counter. And Levy, you know, I said I thought he was going to take the game plan. He did seem a little more hesitant there to actually get to Martinson's legs that last 40 seconds. Yeah, we saw him get to a single, but just that for the step out and back underway here in the second period. Sure, if Martinson can rely on counter attacks, counter chest wrap attacks here. At some point, he's probably going to have to get to his underhook in his attack as he is trailing by four points. Levy, obviously, a little more tentative here in the second period. There's a nice double from Levy. Four points offered and confirmed. Levy once again up by eight. Pinch headlock attempt here from Martinson. Levy clears it. Levy took a shot to the eye. Taking a look at Levy's eye. He's fine, let's go. 
And now Levy getting back out there. Sure, what's going on right now? Looks like Ed Tabler for sure is holding something. Uh, they were checking the time, I believe. Gonna have to add some time back on the clock here. 55 seconds. 56 seconds. Step in single from Levy. To the fans. Levy circles to the center looking for a single act, but Job from Martinson gonna counter. And you feel the momentum maybe switching a little bit in favor of Martinson, but it might be too little too late here with under 20. Five seconds to go. We're gonna run that half. You see that too often. Yeah. Slip confirmed, no points there for Levy. Just four seconds remain between Jacob Levy and his Fargo title. And Jacob Levy of Georgia has done it. He took second here a year ago. Oh, big boy backflip. <laughs> big boy backflip. And the point, is that the three straight backflips? Yeah. second here a year ago, came here on a mission and got it done in really impressive fashion. Yeah, mission accomplished there for Levy and Give us a wrap up, some of your highlights.